Hello dear friends, welcome back to another important class in which we will discuss a river, a very very popular poem by A.K. Ramanujan and in this particular video we will discuss about the meaning of the poem and some important images, we will discuss all these things. So let's start uh, with basic introduction to the poet. Uh, A.K. Ramanujan, born and brought up in Mysore, uh, southern India. His full name being Atipat Krishna Swami Ramanujan and he was a gifted poet, a translator, a linguist who made impressive contribution to Indian English poetry. Dear friends, uh, uh, after his initial career as a teacher in few South State Universities, he moved to Indiana University, US uh, on the Fulbright Scholarship to pursue his PhD in Linguistic. So uh, basically he has a very illustrious uh, career as an academic. Then uh, he joined the, uni the University of Chicago as Professor of Linguistics and Professor of South Asian Languages and Civilizations. And there he made his name by his innovative teaching, by his, uh, you know, wide range of topics he covered uh, in all these things. Ramanujan is a polyglot. Polyglot means a person who has command over many languages, more than one language, then we call him polyglot. So Ramanujan was well versed. He has command over English, Kannad and Tamil and he has composed, he has written his works in all these languages. Now his major works, uh, if we, they, there are you know translations which are great contribution to the uh, Indian, uh, Indian literature and uh, there are his original poetry collections. If we talk about poetry collections, the main being his first poetry collection, The Striders published in 1966 then Relations published in 1971 and Second Sight published in 1986. If we talk about uh, translations and literary studies, in this section we have his works like The Interior Landscape, Love Poems from a Classical Tamil Anthology published in 1967. It is a very popular work. Then we have Speaking of Siva. Speaking of Siva is once again uh, his translation of some ancient uh, Tamil text. Is there an Indian way of thinking? Published in 1990 is his path breaking essay about particular critical, uh, we can say, uh, interactions and critical thinking of Indian literature and Indian critics and how uh, it is aesthetically uh, and linguistically different from the Western approach towards literature. If we talk about the present poem, A River, it is one of the most celebrated and famous poems by Ramanujan. And it is taken from his collection, Selected Poems, uh, published in 1976, though uh, we know that the poem was composed quite early in 1966. Uh, the setting of the poem is Madurai city. Madurai city is a very <coughs> famous Indian city. Uh, it is seat of a uh, South Indian culture and uh, the river which is referred though uh, the article A is used so it is not one particular specific river but we can make a guess that the river the poet is talking about is Vaigai river a river that flows through the heart of Madurai city it passes through the center of Madurai city the poem presents uh, if we talk in one line about what this poem is about. It, it uh, presents the speaker's observation about the river and how poets from different generations have treated the subject, always ignoring the reality. Uh, in other words, we can say the this particular poem is an attempt to de-glamorize. Now, Deglamorize. Uh, a particular problem uh, with poetry is that it tries to glamorize, it tries to look from the romantic glass some uh, things. But it is not always possible and especially modern poets, they 
they want to de glamorize they want to see the things as they are and even if they are ugly and even if they are prosaic they try to present that in poetry so we come to the poem the text in madurai city of temples and poets who sang of cities and temples uh, if we look at this particular phrase temples and poets so from the very beginning the poet highlights the speaker highlights the fact that madurai is famous for both its beautiful temples architecture and for poets those poets who always a uh, sing of who always write of uh, these beautiful architecture architectural marvels like cities and temples they 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 uh, they do not have eyes for reality from ground real for ground reality every summer a river dries to a trickle in the sand now once again uh, we can say that Uh, the river becomes just a narrow stream due to heat and lost its beauty it's a common phenomena in india that uh, those river which 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 uh, which are basically based on rain which uh, uh, get their water source from rain during summer season in the excessive heat uh, most of them become narrower their course is basically reduced and they 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 become just like a smaller stream now uh, after pointing out this reality uh, when it becomes dry it bears bearing the sand ribs straw and women's hair now what is happening uh, using the metaphor sand ribs how is this is metaphor and it compares the shape of the sand there are marks on the sand uh, left by the flow of water and now they appear like human ribs and once again this is a very you know beautiful metaphor because when we are able to see a man ribs it means that particular person is suffering from malnutrition he is very weak that is why we are able to see the ribs so this shows that sand rib shows that river is also the river is also a uh, very weak straw and women's hair now why uh, we are able to see women hair after the river bed has dried because it is a common tradition in south even in some places at north to offer once hair to a holy river a holy water body uh, on the fulfillment of some wish so there are lot of we can say women uh, getting their uh, head shaven and uh, giving the hair to the river clogging the water gates at the rusty bars under the bridges with patches of repair all over them now here comes the ironic twist by ramanujan uh, on the one hand he has pointed out the natural things like sand ribs the pious things like here but at the same time he points out that the water gates now water gates is that uh, we find them in dams and they are uh, they are used to control the flow of water now at this time rusty bars bars iron bars which which become rusty because of being uh, in continuous contact with water under the bridges now there are bridges with patches of repair all over them it is one of such a common occurrence especially in indian context to look at uh, government structures like bridges and there is maintenance work going on continuously year after year so there are patches of repair all over them uh, Uh, they instead of some romantic picture of the river instead of pointing out how it flows and something else the speaker presents a realistic unpoetic image of the dry year so basically as the river dries during the summer season all the objects that were initially submerged uh, in the water they are now exposed and by highlighting the fact that the bars are rusty and the bridge has patches of repair uh, the speaker ironically presents the neglect and ignorance of people and administration towards the river they they don't have 
even we can find that holiest of our rivers are uh, fully polluted and people generally don't care about its health. So this is what Poet is once again pointing out. Now he uses two very effective similes uh, to describe uh, some more objects. He says the wet stones glistening like sleepy crocodiles, the dry ones shaven water buffaloes lounging in the sun. Now these two images that there are some wet stones, wet stones because they were submerged in the water and there is a, a sort of shine on them because of uh, con constant touch of water. So they look like sleepy crocodiles as if a large crocodile which is known for its lethargic nature uh, lay, uh, laying in that particular river or water body. So they appear like wet uh, sleepy crocodiles. The dry ones because of continuous friction, they, they have become, uh, now they are dried, but they are like shaven water buffaloes. Once again, you can understand that because of their particular black grayish color, they appear like water buffaloes lounging in the sun. Once again, buffalo lounging in the sun is an image which creates a sense of, uh, we can say, quite calm and undisturbed kind of thing. The poets only sang of the floods. This is now line which basically shifts the focus from the description of the river to the description of those writers who wrote about the river. So the poets only sang of the floods. Why? Because the dry river has nothing uh, poetic to talk about. So only, <coughs> so only when the river was full of water, when even there was flood, there was something to write. Uh, the speaker thus uses two similes to describe the different shaped and style stones at the river bed and compare them with crocodiles and water buffaloes. He was there for a day when they had the floods. People everywhere talked of the inches rising, of the precise number of cobbled steps run over by the water rising on the bathing places and the way it carried off three village houses, one pregnant woman and a couple of cows named Gopi and Brinda as usual. Now this is what the poet, the old poet when he was here looking at the river full of blood, what he find? He came here only to observe the river, but he find that people are in panic. People were in panic. People everywhere were talking of, of the inches rising, how the water is rising from the mark of danger. Every river has a particular, you know, a vertical plate, just keeper marks lage hote hai, and then there is a point that, that is danger level. The inches rising, the water is going over that particular mark. This happens uh, very, it's a very common phenomena in India during the monsoon season. Of the precise number of uh, cobalt steps run over by the water, we have bathing ghats, where there are cobalt steps. Now, cobalt because uh, so that they won't become sleepy because of this water. So, they are cobbled steps. Now, uh, as the water is increasing inch by inch, the steps are getting submerged in the water, rising on the bathing places and the way. And the people obviously are talking about casualties. People are talking about what, uh, what the, this flood has caused. Three village houses, they have been drowned or flown in the flow. One pregnant woman and a couple of cows. Look at the number. Three, then one, and then couple of cows. So the, these all things matter to the common people. And couple of cows named Gopi and Brinda as usual. This is very important. Once again, an ironical touch because it shows that how people follow one particular tradition and we have women without a name, but we have cows who have particular names. So the, the old poet found the river beautiful only when it was flooded. 
they were not worried about the problems it created in the lives of common people how they are suffering their house their their property possessions they, they are losing that but they were totally blind or we can say they are totally uh, ignorant about these things this shows how the poets were totally cut off from the ground reality they were writing poetry uh, living in their cloud cuckoo land they, they were totally uh, we can say untouched by the uh, human tragedy the new poets still quoted the old poets but no one spoke in verse of the pregnant women drowned with, <laughs> with perhaps twins in her kicking at blank walls even before birth now the new poets once again they repeated they found inspiration in the old poets no one spoke in verse nobody cared about the pregnant women uh, drowned perhaps twins now this is the speaker imagine that maybe the lady was pregnant with twins kicking at blank walls even before birth now uh, the new poets didn't pay attention to the tragedy which flood caused and this blank wall is a very evocative image because it suggests that the pregnant woman was poor and hungry blank walls uh, it it provides the activity of the twins they are kicking at the uh, walls maybe they want to get free maybe uh, the woman was kicking her legs when water has taken her away whatever the sense but it shows uh, the helplessness the poverty the resource, lack of resources and apathy of people or apathy of poets and administration towards these common folks he said the new newer poet the river has water enough to be poetic about only once a year once again the new poets feel that what is there to write about this river uh, it is almost dry throughout the year only during the monsoon time we can find some poetic thing in this river and then and after this short period there are a lot of screaming lot of tragedies once again it loses the river loses its poetic uh, beauty it carries away in the first half hour three village houses a couple of cows named gopi and brinda this is how the new poets almost re repeated the words of the the old poets and for them the overflowing river can be a poetic subject but they are blind to the havoc to the tragedy it brings and it is quite ironical if you look at if you remember the first line that madurai is city of temple and poets the poets who should be uh, very sensitive uh, but they are totally a pathetic totally non challenged uh, for the human tragedy and one pregnant women expecting identical twins with no mole on their bodies with different colored diapers uh, one line is missing i write it then to tell them apart okay so once again you can see this is a uh, speaker uses his own imagination to think about the twins <coughs> he says uh, the twins may born with without any special birthmark so it would be difficult for the mother to identify to differentiate between uh, these uh, twins so she uh, uses diaper of different colors so that it they could be differentiated now this is obviously a touch of uh, both wit and irony in these lines in which poet is imagining that how uh, the life of a common person uh, works not according to the poetic principles so the poem ironically lashes at those poets who see the river only with the romantic glasses these poets are apathetic to human sorrow and suffering and their poetry does not mirror the miseries of the human beings the casual way in which the speaker counts the tragedies 3 2 1 uh, caused by the flood actually reflects how far the insensitive poets old and new poets uh, casualties are just numbers nothing else another ironic touch is that people have named the cows 
but they have completely ignored and are unconcerned with poor pregnant women. She is for them a nameless identity. These app uses of wit, irony and humor and dramatic imagery is distinctive of Ramanujan's style. Okay friends, that was all for this particular class. I hope I was able to make you understand this beautiful poem. Thank you friends once again.